Hey, it's me! So what better place to do an intro than in front of my window where the sun is shining? Because I decided to film a video. It was a very impromptu decision. And on my way to get my, uh, my um, tripod, something that holds my phone, uh, I discovered this. And yeah, it's really pretty. So, got the tripod. Let's make our way back to the sewing station. better so I um, was sitting here working on my son's regalia and I just decided maybe I should film this real quick I'm not even looking at the camera it's right there hi this is my son's yoke front apron whatever you want to call it maybe not apron I call it a yoke um, he's a grass dancer I took the fringe off which is a white yarn fringe because this I mean, he's 10. <laughs> I royally messed up there. I made it way too big. My intention behind making it big was I figured that if I make it big enough for him to grow into, then maybe it'll be a long, long time before I have to make him another one. And that was a bad decision because it's too big for him now. And on top of that, I imagine that when he gets to be this big, he's gonna want his own idea of how he wants his regalia to be. So I'm gonna have to make him another one anyway. Anyway, I have this and what I'm doing right now is I have a new one cut out, same colors, and I am redoing the applique. So I'm going to be redoing this portion right here. I'm not doing these flowers, but I'm also going to put some ribbon on there. Anyway, this isn't this isn't the point. You know what the point is because I'm going to title the video. I just thought that I would quickly show you how to do the applique. So big disclaimer, um, applique is a touchy subject in Indian country, believe it or not. Everybody has their ideas on how to do applique the right way, their way. Um, so if, if you don't agree with how I do applique, that's okay. Uh, put in the comments how you like to do it. Um, and maybe other people can learn from that. Whether they want to see all of the options that they have for doing applique, or maybe they tried the way that I describe it in this video and didn't like it, and they can look onto yours. This is how I do it, and it works for me. Um, and I imagine it doesn't work for everybody, so yeah. This is my video. What I use is heat bond. <laughs> so this is, th this is the polarizing topic right here, whether or not to use heat bond or what product to use to adhere applique to, uh, to regalia. So if you don't know what heat bond is, heat bond is this stuff. Um, as you can see this glimmering here, this shininess, these are, uh, it's glue. It's basically just dry glue. And when you get it hot, it melts. And when it cools back down, it basically, it melts the fabrics together. So to use heat bond, what you do is you take whatever fabric it is, okay? put the heat bond on top and then you iron it. Once you uh, put the heat bond on the fabric, then <clears throat> you peel this white paper off. It's backed with paper and then it leaves a film of glue. So long as you ironed it right, the glue that is left over, you'll then put the glue side onto the fabric and iron it and then it'll it'll be stuck together but i don't think that heat bond alone is um is good enough to make your material stick together forever it's basically <clears throat> an in the moment thing and it also produces a nice stiffness to your applique um because 
this applique here, I didn't use heat bond and this is why I feel heat bond works for me. I didn't use heat bond here and as you can see, there's like a wrinkling here. I straight up just took these and sewed them on, nothing else. And there are other materials to use behind, besides heat bond for, you know, helping you get that stiffness. Um, but this is what I prefer. The only thing about heat bond is it is a glue. And this is one big reason that a lot of people don't like it. It's a glue. So if you use heat bond enough, it'll gunk up your uh, sewing machine needle. So keep that in mind. Um, if you plan on doing a lot of applique, um, you might have to end up changing your sewing needle or cleaning it off eventually. I did forget to mention here that I personally have not had these issues that I, I just talked about. I've just heard other people who said that they did. I've never had an issue with the heat bond glue gunking up my sewing needle at all. So just thought I'd throw that out there. So yeah, this is, I'm trying to make it a really quick video. So I'm just going to show you what I got going on here. All right. So like I said, I'm redoing this and I have all of my colors out and I need to heat bond them now. So I have these little triangles cut out uh, just to help me recreate these squares. And because heat bond is precious and it's hard to guess how much to use, what I'm going to do is trace these onto the paper ahead of time and then I will heat bond them to the material. Trace your design onto the paper side of the heat bond in any which way that allows you to get the most out of your supply. And then cut that section of the heat bond off of the rest of your heat bond and place it glue side down onto your fabric and iron it on using a medium synthetic heat. And cut your shapes out. Once you got your pieces cut out, you can peel off your paper and a film of glue will be revealed. If you have a fabric where a particular side is going to be showing on your design and one side is not, place your heat bond against the side that is not showing. Once you got all your pieces heat bonded and cut out, test your design to see if it all came out correctly before ironing it on. Only iron one to two pieces on at the same time though, not ironing the entire design on at the same time or else you risk the pieces moving around as you apply the iron. I also use a high heat and I spend more time ironing these pieces on just to make sure they're nice and stuck. If your design requires multiple layers of heat bond pieces, don't apply those multiple layers at the same time. Apply them separately or else you'll risk the bottom layer not adhering. And once you have all of your pieces ironed on, it's time to sew. I use a zigzag stitch when I sew these on and I also make the length and the width very short and small and close together. I like to get the needle as close as I can to the fabric using the manual turning knob just so I can make sure that my needle is right where I want it to be, right on the edge of that fabric. Once I got that needle where I want it to be, then I will use the foot pedal so I can sew along the edge slow and steadily. When I get close to that corner, I will again use the manual turning knob so I can sew with precision and get that needle in the perfect spot for turning the sewing direction. It's possible that your needle might not end up in that perfect spot, so it's totally okay to lift up the foot a little and reposition the fabric. 
make sure your needle is in the fabric. Lift up the foot, turn the fabric, and put the foot back down and you've repositioned the sewing direction. I just wanna quickly reiterate how important it is to keep your needle in the fabric before lifting up the foot. Allowing the fabric to move around too much will pull at the threads and thus mess up the thread tension, which messes up your zigzag stitch. Trim off any hanging threads before circling back around to the beginning so that you don't sew those threads into your design. And when you've finally circled all the way back around to the beginning, make sure you go over those stitches a couple times back and forth so you essentially tie a knot. Don't forget to sew on all top layers as well. We don't want any raw edges on applique. So here's a quick tip. If you have two pattern pieces against each other, instead of sewing both edges separately, you can sew right in the middle, catching the needle on both pattern pieces. You can use a wider stitch than what I'm using here as well if you're more comfortable, if you don't trust yourself to be this precise. And that's the basics. So for this great um, big piece as a whole, I'm not going to be heat bonding the back. Um, I'm actually going to finish these edges off by folding them. And then I'm going to sew them directly on to the cape and then just sew down the sides. Yeah, so that is applique. Um, so any videos or whatever that i think that you would find helpful i'll put in the description i know that there's other videos out on youtube about doing applique and i will link those as well and like i said anything else that you want to add put it in the comments and this was fun i'll see you next time bye bye